Good evening, Lake Orion. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Ian Witherspoon. I'm the host, and I am Between Terminas. Well, hello, Lake Orion. <laughs> so nice of you to join us. Uh, I'm wearing a paper bag on my head, and as you'll notice, so are my friends. And we're here to talk about the Detroit Lions. Yes, we are. Hey, Sparky. And we're wearing bags on our head. And to, there's a skeleton here. And there's a skeleton. I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know why there's that. <laughs> That's the Lions for you. That's the shell. This is the shell of the lion season right here. Oh, absolutely it is. This is all that remains. <laughs> Sammy, oh, you want to talk. Well, you know, you could see my paper bag. You know, I think the reason why the lions are struggling is because they've had to clean the house. Their offense is terrible. Mm. Defense is garbage. <laughs> and, of course, you could probably see my, um, the thing I have for the lions. They're known as losers. And I understand you want the guy that sings the lion song fired? Oh, absolutely, because he's part of the problem. He was what? there for 0-16. He was there for 0-16, and he was there for, um, and he was there when, you know, they had that despicable season. He is the problem. I don't know why this, this, this idiot gets the, um, gets, gets sideline passes just to sing a stupid song. Anybody can sing a stupid song. True. I mean, the Vikings have a song, the Bears have a song. And the Lions song is absolutely hideous. <laughs> you don't like the Lions song? Nope. Anthony, you're always a little more peaceful in your presentation. What are your thoughts on the Lions in this weekend? The offense struggled. Yes. May who deserved to get fired. He's not. Or no, not. Well, the offensive coordinator. Joe Lombardi Joe has Lombardi been fired. Joe Lombardi has been fired. And he deserved to, it. Yep. Uh, Stafford should not get the blame, at least in this case. Um, the Lions wasted a great opportunity, especially, you, you just got that feeling when they were up, seven, when they were up, that the Vikings were going to come back. And well, the Vikings were not a good road team. No, they didn't have they a road really win, did they? No. <sighs> Ford Field, place where miracles for other teams happen <laughs> since 02, huh? The yep. key word is other teams. <laughs> Yeah. The key word is other teams. Dang, I look horrible in this bag. Why did I get why did you guys make me wear this? Well, because this this is our way of showing that this is not much better than 08. This is not much better than But at 0 least the 16. lines of a win. Who cares? Who cares? They still have the worst record in the league. I know. Do they have the worst record in the NFL? Yes. Yeah. Oh boy. that is the league they play in. Well, Baltimore's only got one win, mm -hmm. but uh, they're playing tonight, and they could win. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? Joe Lombardi's out. Jim Bob Cooter takes over. Oh, who is it? That would have a guy named Jim Bob Cooter. I, I'm not sure. Good Lord. So I, He's next to get fired. Okay, okay, okay. Hey. Is, are these scapegoats, though? Do you get the feeling that these are guys that... They're just, they're little guys. You know, it doesn't the real problem lie in the man who built the team? Yes, it does. And that's Martin Mayhew. He needs to get fired. He's a melon stooge that really describes <laughs> epitome. He's a melon stooge. <laughs> and the other and the other guy is going to get fired next to Jim Caldwell because he's on the hot seat right now. I agree. Yeah. Do you think do you think that Matt Stafford is going to go to Hugh, get traded to Houston? Yes. No. no, you know where Matt Stafford's going? Where? Dallas. No, Tony Romo's still gonna be the man. Ah, paper bag Tony Romo. He's weak. He's hurt all the time. Stafford in Dallas makes sense. He's from Dallas. Anything? What do you think? 
you know, I mean. We're stuck with him for another year or two. Two years. Two years. I mean, I don't blame Stafford right now because of the offensive the offensive coordinators he's around that has, have been associated with him. It's just not been very good. Well, you know, <sighs> Stafford's part of the, the – there needs to be a bomb dropped on Allen Park and the whole organization because they're bad, and there's very little good. I mean, what's good? Calvin DeAndre Johnson? Levy, Condre, uh, Calvin Johnson. Do you think Mathis and Levy need to go, or – Everybody needs to go. I, I really, I really am a, of that opinion. Everyone needs to go. Even Calvin. He's getting old. He'll be going soon enough. It's a shame. His career was wasted. His talent was wasted. He didn't win a thing. Because the Lions are losers. What about the guy who sings the Lions song? I want to punch him. Why? Because I want to throw him in the Detroit River. Now, is there any uh, – will anything happen? Will the team respond to the firings? Will they show up? They play What's Kansas happen? City and London. Absolutely not. They're losing to KC. You think they're going to lose to KC? Oh, absolutely, because I like Chigar West. He had 110 yards. Who did? West. Oh, <laughs> back up. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to wake up early on Sunday for nothing, huh? Yep. Well, it's not that early. Happy not Halloween. Sure. Well, that's the Lions for you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they keep this up. I don't know <laughs> if we'll even need to talk about them. Yeah. What need to do? You all right? I'm fine. We might need to cut this segment out. Mm-hmm. Yes. If they go to 1-7, 1-8, 1-9, da 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 Then what will we talk about on the show? Our feelings? We could talk about our feelings. <laughs> You yeah, know. let's talk to run a better <laughs> yeah. program than the Lions. They got Kansas City and London. They got a bye week. <laughs> yeah. And then guess what they got? Green Bay at Lambeau. Bingo. <laughs> Lost. Good night, <laughs> Good Irene. night, Irene. Mm-hmm. Good night and good luck. Listen, folks, <laughs> we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to talk about something else next. Stay tuned. <laughs> Make a trip over to the Orion Arts Center to enjoy some family fun and fresh food at the 2015 Lake Orion Farmer's Market. Every Wednesday through October 21st from 2 to 7 p.m., local vendors will bring their farm fresh produce, baked goods, and more for the parents while the kids have some fun playing games or making crafts. Remember to come often as vendors change from week to week as new crops come into season. For more information on the Lake Orion Farmer's Market or to sign up as a vendor, visit lakeorionfarmersmarket.com. When I'm in Lake Orion and I want to catch up on sports, I watch Between Terraminas. Welcome back to Between Terraminas. Thanks for sticking with us. It was a miserable segment, the line. It was a miserable segment. Yeah. Yes, it was. At least I can at least breathe again. Yeah, I feel like I got a little too much carbon dioxide on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dragons won their last game of the season. Whoa. They beat Farmington 17-14. to um, Let's recap the Dragons' season. They finished 4-5. and five. Real quick, how was that last game? Was it a, an inspired effort? Was it a lack of It was a character game. It was a it was a really it was a character game where you had a lot of injuries, but the kids played hard. They played they played football. Um, you, when you play when you have nothing to lose, you know you just you you know you prepare for next year. If you're a senior, you want to go out to win, and you got to give credit to this group. They went out and they won that football game. They beat a pretty good team at it in the process. You know. Been a disappointing year. It has. You know, I thought the de- Orient defense really were bailed out on a couple mistakes with Farmington. Um, the one personal thought led to a touchdown. You know that 15 yards. Yes. Play, and then the one that Orient stopped on fourth down and one from the one yard line. Um, you know that was huge, but you know. I wish this team could have shown up a little bit sooner because 
They've had two despicable losses that cost them their season, the Troy Athens and Stony Creek games. Um, this team was not very good defensively, especially this senior class. You know what I mean? They were, but there were a lot of encouraging plays from the junior class. You know, um, one kid in particular I thought had a nice game was Roger White. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he played well <coughs> in getting extended minutes. Um, the special teams I thought were a little shaky a little bit, but I just thought the defense showed up. Offensively, they need to develop receivers. Um, thankfully, a sophomore class coming up is going to have some good receivers. And, um, well, you know, I mean, and, um, and, um, and I'm hoping that Kane Prescorn improves his accuracy because I didn't think he was accurate that night against Farmington. Well, I mean, in defense of the senior class, you know, um, it, they, they did, there were games that they did try. Um, they did work hard. Um, you know, one kid that I was really proud of this year, Brody Kreitzer. Worked very, very hard all year long. Um, Tyler Barkley was another senior that worked very, very hard all year. Um, and if you look at, you know, the offensive line, the offensive line played very well this year. The defensive line was, was, cha was a bit challenging to watch at times. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, the seniors, went out, ended their season with a win. And that's the most important thing that you, that you get out of this. And then for the younger guys, they get, the experience, they get the experience. Hopefully they can build off of this for next year. Well, it's well, the second straight year with, the, with no playoffs. Right, you know what I mean? and that's very, very and bothersome. It's very, un, it's un, very un uncharacteristic. Do you, and we've talked about this before. Complacency leads to entitlement. And um, what's ha what happened in... You know, we did not see that in this game with Farmington. We've seen it. We saw it in the Athens. We saw it in the Stony Creek games. Um, we ju and we saw it at Clarkston. But we did not see it in this game. It just it felt like everybody was out there to play. Everybody had something to to play for, something to drive for. And in the end, it worked out. And you know, it got a good home win against a, a playoff, essentially a playoff team. When you look at Farmington, I mean, like this is a. Um but this team actually, this is a good win for this team. But hoping it's a building block heading into next year when they open up with Chippewa Valley. Um, we don't know mm -hmm. if it's going to be home or on the road yet, but... Um, Pretty sure but, it's Chippewa. But um, when, you look at, um, when you look at this game, when you look at this season, everybody's going to look at the Athens-Stony Creek games are the two games that's going to really bother me. Also lost to Chippewa Valley, and then, of course, the... Blow, the loss is to West Bloomfield and the blowout loss to Clarkson. I mean, right now, this team, they've got to fix the mental state of this program, which is right now shot. And it's the, um, it's that entitlement set, and it's they got to fix the, um, the games that they just got to get up for. You know, I don't you know. You got to get ready for every game. That's the reality. I don't know how this, this team was against Troy Athens and Clarkson. Uh, Stony and Stony Creek, Creek sorry. But... You know, but I just can't understand what happened against Clarkson. I can't understand what happened against West Bluefield. You know, and I can't understand. And, of course, the Chippewa Valley game, you know, Chippewa Valley's got a lot of seniors on that team. Well, senior I mean, the though. thing is, is that you said this best. It was a, you know, you got to go into it. You got to go into every game like it's a big game. And you just did not, with this group, you didn't get that feeling this year. You got, with this season, I wouldn't say this whole group, but, I mean, you just, and the reality of it is you've got, you know, in Clarkston, you can't concede against Clarkston. You can't go into it like, oh, we've already lost. You can't go into that to a game like that again and feel that way. And I think that a lot of it was the mental state of the kids all season long. And hopefully next season you don't see that mental, you don't see that mentality. You know what I like the, the sophomore class coming up. I think the sophomore class and junior class are going to really merge with each other, um, so. even though I think what needs to be shown at practices, you know what I mean, is that fight, you know what I mean, that toughness, you know, what made us tough was, was, was you know, getting at it in practice, getting at it with each other, you know Being what I mean? Being physical, Being relentless. Being physical, relentless, fighting. playing that type of defense, playing that fighting, you know, I think that type has got to work for this program. I think the problem with this program is they've been too soft on these kids the last few seasons. And that has starting to become a problem. And 
if as long as these kids, these kids cannot be nurtured. They have to earn their way on the field. And I think the last two, three years that they, that this group has been nurtured. Well, I mean, there is a, I mean, it just it goes into physicality. You have to be fit more physical. You have to be relentless. You have to have a drive. You have to be motivated. You have to be mad. You know, I think I next mean, year it starts with changing the unis. I mean, there's got to be some changes, and I think Coach Bell and the coaching staff will look into changing some of the things that have happened. And really, it's the player's mindset. I mean, it's as a coach, it's very, very tough to coach a kid whose mindset is what it is. Um, but the, but if a lot the mindset of it is, is what it is, he doesn't it, deserve to play. He's got a tough mindset. A lot, of it's the player, a lot of it is the player's mindset, and the mindset's got to be motivated, got to be hungry, got to got to work hard for it. And also, you have, and also too, and I know you and I have spoken about this, um, real, it's a realignment year next year. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding realignment, and um, obviously we're seeing this year in the playoffs, Groves and Berkeley, I feel, are two teams that don't deserve to get in, but they're in. I'll talk because a lot this more on the podcast, you know what I mean, right. why that these two teams are in the playoffs. But <laughs> when you look at, when you look but at. But I think, but my point is, Orion needs, but when or, you, I mean, it depends who Orion's going to play. Because, I mean, you want to keep, you want to keep playing Oxford, you want to keep playing Clarkson. A lot of alumni want to play Rochester Adams again. Um, you know, you pretty much feel like you could get Athens and Stony Creek and West Bloomfield again. But, I mean, you look at the natural rivalries are what makes, you know. And then you're looking at potentially if the league stays enrollment division, Southfield moving up. That's, you know, you well, and Southfield I have been dangerous because when you look at Southfield, the rivalries there, it won't, they, won't, they don't have a lot of strong rivalries with anybody in the north. And, of course, people are going to complain about the um, – their times, you know, and because of their gang issues, but then the you know, I, if I, if it was me, if Safi wants to go the enroll, it wants to come up the red, they have to agree to this demand. Play their home games at seven o'clock, but um, I don't think that's going to happen. I just think Southfield's going to stay in the white. A lot of their natural rivalries. A lot of their natural I rivalries. I think that the there. league should should stay upon the natural rivalries because you look at you get the most revenue if you're going to games with the natural I think you, br- I think you put rivalries. Troy down, you put Troy in the blue. You put grow, move grows up, and to the white, and then you bring in, you put Rochester in the red. That makes sense. That yeah, makes everybody happy. What about Adams? Adams goes the to red too. Makes so, everybody happy. Love to see how it goes with with league league realignment. So, I mean, it's already you know Lake Orion's playing Chippewa Valley again. So, but we'll see. Uh-huh. Did this guy just move? Yes. Okay, that's creepy. And you had a call out. You wanted to. Yes, wanted to start. I want to do a call out of. Um, I want to call out the OA. Why? Simple. Look, you know. Look at that skeleton. Oops. All right. The reason why I want to call out the OA is because of how the realignment was set. This year it was, or the last two years it was set up because <laughs> Groves to benefit Groves, to benefit Berkeley, and then last year set up Farmington. Their play in the last year, Farmington. They actually, it, the problem I have is they have a league, the OAA Blue, where you play teams to the level of, you're, you're playing teams that are not to the level of your competition. Three of those teams are essentially not very good. And you've got teams that are benefiting from this, particularly Groves, Berkeley, and last year, Farmington, but this, but this year they moved up the white. And Royal Oak actually had a pretty good season. I think that the league needs to do a lot better job in terms of, of, the, of having bigger schools play smaller schools because you look at the playoff picture, the smaller schools are going to be, are playing, the, are playing, the smaller schools that are getting in are probably going to get killed in the playoffs. Well, a perfect example, watch this Friday, Groves versus Harrison. Harrison is going to steamroll Groves. And then you're looking at the OA Red teams, you're looking at particularly Lake Orion, Troy Athens, Stony Creek. Teams that are capable of getting in, the, and then Rochester Adams in the white, and then you know, and then also North Farmington. Teams that are more than capable of getting into the playoffs are missing out because of the stupid re, stupid enrollment divisions. I've been against enrollment divisions <clears throat> for years now, and ever since going to these enrollment divisions since 2008, it has really not benefited. 
I, I don't. I just don't think enrollment divisions benefit the OA, and I think that the that the league needs to reconsider. I think going geographic would be very, very good. I think that maybe it's time for the league to look at geographic. Also, maybe it's time the league take a look at putting in Lapeer. Maybe it's time to rip off the charter and put Lapeer in the league because Lapeer wants in. It makes sense. Lapeer's a pretty good football program. So OA, maybe it's time to reconsider some things. If you want to be a mega conference, it's time to reconsider. Okay, we're going to go on the break here. Um, we got Michigan State football and some hockey to talk about here on Between Terminus. Hello, Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina talking OA now. In it, we'll talk various stories from reigning from the state to Oakland County teams affecting the OAA. Catch us here on OA Now. Hello Lake Orion, it's Anthony Terramina, co-host of Between Terraminas. I want to let you know of a new show called History Now. In it, we're going to talk about global, national, and political events that occur in our lifetime. We're going to also have guests and also have co-hosts as well, and also plenty of surprises. Catch us on History Now here on ONTV. Hey, this is Mickey York from Fox Sports Detroit. When I want to get the inside scoop on local sports, I watch between Terminas or Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, let's talk about college football. Florida State got upset on them. A kick six, did you hear about uh, the black six? Black you hear about it? returned. Returned for, yep. it's called black six. Black six, <laughs> just like similarly. Kick, bam, a kick. And similarly, similarly, black, the miracle, miracle in at Michigan. Michigan. Oh, Whatever they're calling it. So there's a little shake up there. Uh, Baylor is quarterback. Done for the year. Gone, that hurts. Uh, they they steamroll. Michigan State still undefeated. And Michigan State <laughs> they still undefeated. They didn't go. They're still getting no respect. None. Um, and you know what? Connor Cook is good. I know. And Michigan State still has no offensive line. They're because they're all hurt. Yeah. But they got thankfully, the bye week. thankfully, this is going to help them out. Yep. The bye. Yep. I heard a rumor. Mark Dantoni said they're not going to practice all week. No. I've been hearing it. No. Because everybody's hurt, especially the offensive line is banged up. Hmm. I know they are. Well, they are. There's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. They need to get healthy. It'll be good to improve your academics, too. True, mm -hmm. true, true. They don't really worry about that, though. They should. They do worry. They, they do worry about that. academics. Um, you know what, though? The results on the field, um, it's not pretty. But, they're but it's it a done. W. Mm -hmm. It's a win each week. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got Nebraska when they come back? Yep, in Lincoln. And then Minnesota. No, the game. Ohio State. That's after Minnesota. No. Yes. No, they have three yes. left. They have three left. They have Maryland. Maryland. They have oh, Maryland, Maryland, not Minnesota. I'm sorry. Oh, so Nebraska, right. yeah, Maryland, Maryland, Ohio, Ohio State, State, and then and Penn State. Penn State. You're right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to be good. It's mm -hmm. going to be good. Mm -hmm. Ohio State's really the, you know, if you look at that link, that Nebraska game, it's tricky in Lincoln. That but night. I think the, at that night, night they'll win it. They I should think get that the job they should done. win it. Mm -hmm. And then, then the game at Ohio State, you don't want to look ahead to that game. But I think Michigan State's got a great, great shot. If they win the game at Ohio State, I think they got a great shot. They got to be healthy. They got to be healthy to win that game because, especially up front, because they're not healthy right now up front. And, you know, I think this, the injuries have benefited this. I think they benefit the offensive line because it's made them build depth. They can play with other guys at different positions. Um, the secondary does scare me. Yeah. And um, because you know who else is good? Mm -hmm. JT Barrett. JT Barrett. He's pretty darn good. He's pretty darn good. And you know they're gonna give um, when they when Ohio State does play Michigan State, it's gonna be a very tricky game there. Mm -hmm. And then you look at Michigan State. You know Connor Cook. I think he's gonna have big games against Nebraska and Maryland because I am not I'm not high on both their defenses and of course Maryland. 
They had a tough loss to Penn State, mm -hmm. but Maryland is starting to get back a little bit under their assistant or interim coach. Mm -hmm. How about Miami firing now, Golden? Yeah, well, they lost, what, was it 58, 58 to nothing? nothing? Oh, my Ooh, God. That was boy. actually a power eight game. Oh, that was a power man. six game. This is what the U means right now. Bad. Bad. Any team that has U, bad. The Lions don't have a U. No, they don't have a U, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Utah lost to Southern California. Oops. And. Oh, that was the other big loss. Yeah. Ant. Hey, we got, hey, we got hockey. Ant. Hey, Michigan plays Minnesota for a jug this week. Ah, yeah, the little brown jug. Minnesota actually has the jug. Yep. Do you think they win this week? Yes. Michigan? Yes. Do you think Michigan wins this week? Yeah, I think they get the jug back, yes. I'm going to go with Minnesota. You're taking the goats? You're taking the <laughs> because goats. Because we don't know what Michigan's confidence is right now. They it's got to be high. They should be pretty upset. They should be pretty upset. <laughs> they should be pretty, pretty I think Michigan upset. does win. You know, if this were a Hoke-led regime and that had happened, you know, I might pick differently, but, you know. I mean, who knows? There might be ball. snowing up there. True. They True. Could. snowing. Bring their snowshoes. Yep. Well, you want, you want to touch on hockey real quick? Let's touch on hockey real quick. The Wings won. My star six, in Vancouver, six they lost in and Calgary. Two and four. That's tough. <laughs> no. Wings are four and four, I believe. Um, my stars are six and two. That's a lie. Yeah, it is not a lie. Not a lie. Didn't you just lose the other day? Yes, lost to Florida. Got Anaheim. Florida is not bad. Florida is not bad. They're beat, young. Beat Pittsburgh twice. Beat them. Um, Florida once. Mm. You played Pittsburgh twice already. Pittsburgh twice and beat them twice. Interesting. Home and home there or what? Yep. Hmm. So what, beat Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Beat Philly. Philly. Beat Tampa Bay. Well, Philly's another struggling team. Beat Tampa Bay. Tampa's good. They're all right. Mm -hmm. They're all right. Hey, let's see here. Let's see. I did beat Dallas. Shut up. <laughs> what about me? What about you? Who are your losses to? Montreal is the best Montreal. team in the NHL right now. Montreal. I think Montreal is the best team that has. Yeah, 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 yeah. I They're, mean, I got, know the Wings lost to them once. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not a bad loss. Calgary. Who's at, who's at Montreal? Calgary. Calgary. Yep. And, oh, uh, Calgary's bad. Um, Edmonton? Carolina and Edmonton. That Edmonton's Boy, a bad loss. a bad loss. Carolina's a pretty bad loss, too. Carolina's Shush. I lost to Carolina, too. Yeah. Well... You know, there's 82 games. It's still early. It's still early. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited, you know. I'm excited for my stars. Datsu's coming back soon. Hey, I'm still excited for my stars. The stars are going to get this fixed. It looks well, like their number one goalie is finally solving. It's going to be Anthony Yammy for the rest mm. of the year. Well, with, the, with, the, with possibly not talking about the Lions and talking about our feelings, we might have to talk more about hockey. We might need to get more into hockey as the weather gets a little colder. The Lions get a little worse. We still got the Pistons. Also, rest in peace, Flip Saunders. Yes. You will be too missed. Bad. Uh, Pistons start this week. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. College basketball starts they back lose. up. College Practice basketball, lose. yeah. Practices Practice start lose. back up. They're going to have a losing season. <laughs> not falling for that again. They're not going to make the play. This year. Pistons won't make the playoffs. Oakland's going to have a great year in the Horizon League. Michigan State's gonna have a great year in the Big Ten. You know, who knows? I'd love to see. I'd love Oakland. Will, uh, I'd love to see Oakland go back into the NCAA tournament. That would be this great. This time representing tough the Horizon League. Well, that would be great. Hey, this is probably a team that's tougher than maybe two you know, gets in if, the Horizon. If, if, if Oakland was still in the Summit League, they, they win the league hands down easily. Maybe this mm. would be the year Horizon gets two back in. That'd be great. He's back. That would be, be nice. Great. Um, so there's no wager we want to do here. For playoffs? Pistons. Yeah. What's the Pistons? You think they won't make the playoffs? I agree. They won't make the playoffs. I think they will. Let's agree. What are we betting? Dinner. <laughs> Come on, Stan. <laughs> Come on, Stan. I'm hungry. Lose. Haven't lose, eaten yet. Stan. Lose. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Go Lions. <laughs>